because Chris Pincher has decided to resign now, that, I think, allows the Conservatives to schedule that by-election for the same day as Mid-Bedfordshire, which would avoid two days of potential humiliation. Hmm. I mean, if we look at uh, the last set of by-elections that we had just before the parliamentary recess, um, a lot of people were saying that, obviously, Labour was set to win Uxbridge. Uh, <laughs> Selby would have been held by the Conservatives and, obviously, the Lib Dems were going to get Sunton and Froome. Obviously, so much chaos happened. Labour didn't get Uxbridge. They ended up getting Selby. I think we could see a similar sort of, like, mishmash happening if we were to see these two by-elections held on the same day. Same day, yeah. Um, we've got Patrick McFadden, who's now leading the national campaigns for Labour. He's got a wealth of experience, I think. We shouldn't underestimate his uh, ability. He's a formidable fellow. Well, quite. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, now, Natasha, I want to just get a little bit into the into the as it were, the opportunities and the problems. Because Midbeds is a uh, constituency where you've got quite a popular local Conservative candidate, I gather. You've got a rival small-c Conservative candidate who broke away from the party over Nadine Doris's behaviour and is standing as a kind of uh, philosophically conservative, anti-conservative candidate and quite popular in parts of the constituency. You've got the Labour candidate and you've got the Lib Dem candidate. So you've got four potential winners, which seems to me it's quite likely the Tories will hold that seat as things stand. I think that's an interesting theory. Um, I think you're right in terms of the amount of people that are obviously in that seat and the, and the high profileness of Nadine Doris's scathing resignation and her hitting out at, at Rishi Sunak. Um, but in terms of, yeah, whether Labour are going to fold and let the Lib Dems fight it or vice versa is still definitely up for grabs. Speaking yeah. to Labour people this week, that's not something they want to do. They think that they've got the chance to They think to they can do it. But the Lib Dems think they can do it. It's the old thing, you know. Um, it is. And the Lib Dems rather hoped that if Tamworth was on the same day, Labour would put all their efforts into Tamworth, leaving them a free run in Mid Bedfordshire. But I also pick up that this is not going to happen. Yeah, I don't think they. Uh, I think they're still fighting over it essentially, and I can definitely see them both contest, continuing to, to contest that election, and, and that gives the Tories that doesn't give the Tories the opportunity to say Labour and Lib Dems mm. are in bed together and they're they're doing a little stitch up deal. Um, but I think med, mid beds does does provide more of a problem for Rishi Sunak to hold on to that seat because of that majority. Chris Pincher is a very, very different story in a way. You know, it's somebody who helped bring down Boris Johnson's government. Um, you know, he, he was found guilty by a parliamentary panel of, of groping two men in a club. Uh, and obviously it was the cover up around around what Boris Johnson t told people and what people in government were talking about, which, which brought him all crumbling down essentially yeah. last summer. So I think for that, that should be Labour's real target. That should be where they should be focusing their efforts. I think they've probably a much better chance of trying to do that than, than trying to overturn mid-beds. Aletha, let me now step back a little bit and look at the week uh, in, in total, because it's hard to think, I would suggest, of a worse way to start a new parliamentary season if you are the government than the RAC school crisis. I was looking through the list of all the schools most affected and it's almost a point by point set of target seats up and down the length and breadth of England. Quiet, and we've got the Prime Minister essentially, you know, coming to the, the, the dispatch box and saying, oh, well, there's only like 1% of schools that have been affected. We've heard of the Education Secretary, Gillian Keegan, essentially saying the same thing. Most schools aren't affected. It's something they've been pushing on their social media adverts. And to be honest, parents have been struggling. Parents have been prepping their children, getting ready for the new term. Uh, I think the Conservatives themselves have been trying to dominate the needs agenda over parliamentary recess for the number of weeks on small boats, for example, or energy, uh, the environment, mm. only to have all of those efforts sort of like... Blown away, by this. really. Yes, blown um, away. We're just weeks away from conference. Um, we've got lots of Conservative MPs desperate to hear from the Prime Minister on his vision and what they can be offering the country, and yet they're hit by yet another scandal, something that he was arguably involved in when he was Chancellor. And we should never write the, the the Conservatives off or the Prime Minister. He did rather well in Prime Minister's questions, a lot of people feel, this week. And he has this extraordinary, bouncy, rubbery resilience. You know, uh, you know, the worse it gets, the broader his smile, you know, the more bouncy he appears to be. And he's bouncing off to India, where he will have a great time. Uh, and he will be playing on the world stage. And he's had the horizon science 
a deal to announce today, which is very good news for science, even if, as I said earlier on, it may be small potatoes in the post-Brexit situation. Yeah, definitely. And that is something that he can he can say is, you know, clock up as a win is, is he heads off to India, where he's obviously going to get a warm reception there. Um, so obviously, it's from, from the first British Prime Minister of Indian uh, descent have Indian relatives still, still living over there. So I think he will have quite a nice reception from the G20. Mm. But equally, you know, with these summits, they've always got the potential to, to go horribly wrong. And there's a lot of geopolitics politics on the agenda that Rishi will have to carefully navigate, not least the war in Ukraine, which is going to dominate. Uh, and obviously, the talk about an India trade deal. And obviously, you know, Rishi's got a, a, a fine line to balance there because mm. he wants to, you know, get Modi on side for a trade deal. But equally, Modi and India haven't been the most helpful in standing up to Russia over no, the Ukraine haven't. war. That's absolutely, absolutely right. Uh, Aletha, one other obvious big story is the Labour reshuffle. Mm. I have a slight prejudice about reshuffles. I think out there in the country, almost nobody cares or notices. Mm. And in Westminster, we're all completely obsessed. But what do you think? I mean, it's as much as we've been saying all week, really. It really is the return of the Blairites and the, the era and the period of Gordon Brown, we can say. I want to challenge you on that. You see, I'm oh. not sure that is the motivation. I think he's just, Starmer is looking around for people of experience who know something about government. And inevitably, the only ones left who have that happen to have worked for Blair and Brown. I'm not sure they're all kind of ideological Blair. No, I wouldn't say. I mean, there are still people remaining of the soft left, like yeah. Louise Hay, Annalise Dodds, who isn't as vocal as she used to be before she became party chair. And obviously, Ed Miliband, shadow environment yes. secretary. Um, but I mean, I mean, obviously, it's the sort of the reshuffle of front bench roles as well, I'd say, the sort of mm. uh, demotion of Rosanna Alan Khan, for example, or even uh, the former shadow trade secretary, um, who's now sort of a minister without portfolio. Yeah. Um, diversity of thought is a good thing. Uh, Starmer has been waiting for years to finally say, like, I've got a shadow cabinet that's ready for government. And it, the polls. I mean, as John Lansman, the creator of Momentum said, I mean, it's very hard to say this is a real lurch to the right if Angela Rayner is the big winner. You know, she has got a big department. I, I think the relationship between Starmer and Rayner is another of the things we're going to be talking about for a very long time. Mm. But overall strengthened him, this reshuffle? I think so. And I think you say, Alita, it's obviously about getting Keir Starmer ready for government. And it's about him showing that he's got the pe right people in the right places. Is he going to have another reshuffle before the next election? Probably not, because I think, you know, that will probably be not a great idea. Um, it's good to have these people in these roles and crucially shadowing the people that they might then eventually take over from if they were to win another election. I think it has shored up his position. You know, he had a... They have to learn on the job.